Food in England is a 1954 book by the social historian Dorothy Hartley. It is both a cookery book and a history of English cuisine. It was acclaimed on publication. The contemporary critic Harold Nicholson described the book as a classic. It has remained in print ever since. The book provides what has been called an idiosyncratic and a combative take on the history of English cooking. The book is unusual as a history and not citing its sources, serving more as an oral social history from Harley's own experiences as she traveled England as a journalist for the Daily Sketch, interviewing the last generation to have had countryside lives sharing something in common with the Tudors. The book strikes some readers as principally a history, but it consists mainly of recipes. Some of these such as stargazy pie are old-fashioned, but all are practical recipes that can be cooked. Context Dorothy Harley's mother was from Franchisiltau, near Langolan in North Wales, where the family owned quarries and property. In 1933 Hartley moved to a house in Franchisiltau, where she lived for the rest of her life. It was there that she began work on the book for which she is best known, Food in England, leading to its publication in 1954. Book Approach Most of the chapters address aspects of English food, whether types of foods such as meat, eggs, fungi, and bread, or ways of dealing with foods such as salting, drying and preserving. Some chapters such as Elizabethan households are explicitly historical. Every chapter, however, is also a history. For example, Chapter 5, Meat, discusses a rather interesting medieval miracle and illustrates a traditional colonial traveling meat safe of mosquito net. The text switches repeatedly from instructions to prepare mutton fat for a mutton pie crust, melted over a bowl of hot water. To historical asides. Mutton fat was used in the mountain sheep districts for the same purposes as suet or goose grease in the valleys. Many of the processes are distinctly old fashioned, thus, Hartley describes basting, dredging, and frothing, switching between the past and present tenses. Dredging. This was done between bastings. Thus, you dredge with powders or spices to give flavor, or with acid juices, or chopped herbs, which the pouring fat washes down into the crevices of the roasting meat. A substantial part of the text consists of recipes. In the meat chapter, these begin with recipes for beef, including Baron of beef, sirloin, Norman French, sirloin, rib of beef, boiled beef with carrots, and Oat pudding, for boiled beef. Each recipe has a heading in italics, some have an illustration, drawn by Hartley, or else a quotation or proverb. There is no list of ingredients. The first paragraph often describes the dish or its ingredients. Thus for sirloin, she advises. This is the best beef joint and should be roasted. Never have the undercut taken out. The instructions are given in a few paragraphs. Let the sirloin be well hung, dust it lightly with dry mustard, pepper and brown flour to give a crisp crust, bed the fat end well under the lean undercut, and secure in place with string or carefully placed skewer. Roast carefully, basting frequently. Where quantities or cooking temperatures have to be specified, these are included in the instructions, otherwise, matters are left to the cook. S discretion. Thus in spice sauce, sauce for fish or flesh, Hartley directs, take a quart of sharp cider, some mace, a few cloves, some lemon peel, horse radish root sliced, some sweet herbs, six shalloys, shallots, eight anchovies, three spoonfuls of shred red peppers. For baking, where exact instructions are needed, these are given in imperial units, but the oven temperature and timing are again left mainly to the cook's experience. Thus for bath buns, she instructs, make a light dough with one half lb of flour, one quarter lb of butter or lard, one ounce, of castor sugar, two eggs, one half pint of lukewarm milk, and about 1.2 ounces, of yeast. Rub butter into flour, blend. Set it to rise in a warm place. Bake lightly and thoroughly till golden brown. 
Contents Food in England has 27 chapters There is a bibliography and an index. Editions Reception Contemporary on its publication in 1954, the book was received with immediate acclaim, and has remained in print ever since. The Manchester Guardian called it, "...fascinating, unusually readable," Harold Nicholson in The Observer said. It will become a classic, though he made gentle fun of the combative Englishness of Harley's culinary pronouncements. Modern the Sunday Times, reviewing the seventh edition of the book, wrote, For food scholarship at its best see Dorothy Harley's robust, idiosyncratic, irresistible food in England. As packed with diverse and fascinating information as a scotch bun with fruit, this untidy bundle of erudition is held together by the writer's huge enjoyment of her subject, her immense curiosity about everything to do with the growth, preparation, preservation and eating of food in this country since the Middle Ages." The cultural historian Panikos Panayi describes the book as a tour de force, seminal, and richly illustrated, and he notes that food in England is partly a recipe book, partly a history. He contrasts it favorably with Philip Harbin's Traditional Dishes of Britain, published a year earlier, which he criticizes as accepting the stereotypical stalwarts of British food, whereas Hartley rightly accepts Panayi quotes that foreign dishes like the foreigners, become naturalized English. The historian of Food B. Wilson, rereading this endearing work, 58 years on for The Guardian, wrote that she had remembered it as a history book and an epic account of English cooking, interspersed with recipes. She was therefore startled to find that almost the whole of the text is taken up with practical recipes and techniques, with very little historical narrative. Wilson finds the book as hardly explicitly intended, an untidy kitchen, a warm, friendly place. For Hartley, writes Wilson, the past is not a foreign country, but ever-present. She notes that Hartley announces dogmatically that English cooking is old-fashioned, because we like it that way. Wilson finds Hartley's devotion to archaic recipes such as stargazy pie and posset mildly crazed. Quote, but whether mad or not, Hartley approaches the cuisine of the past with the humor and sharpness of a journalist. The historic Royal Palace's curator Lucy Worsley presented a BBC film, Food in England, The Lost World of Dorothy Hartley, on 6 November 2015. Worsley, writing in The Telegraph, calls food in England the definitive history of the way the English eat. Quote, she describes the book as laden with odd facts and folklore, a curious mixture of cookery, history, anthropology and even magic with her own strong and lively illustrations. Quote, she admits it is not a conventional history, since Hartley breaks the first rule of the historian, to cite her evidence. She wasn. T fond of footnotes, in a year of filming Hartley's places and people she knew, Worsley discovered that my frustration with her technique as historian was misplaced. Hartley had traveled continually to gather materials for her weekly daily sketch column, sometimes sleeping rough. In a hedge. The work is thus effectively, Worsley argues, an oral history, as Hartley interviewed. The last generation to have had countryside lives sharing something in common with the Tudors. The emphasis on local, seasonal food chimes well, Worsley suggests, with the modern trend for just those things, the Museum of English Rural Life at the University of Reading curates the Dorothy Hartley collection. It cites the Oxford Dictionary of National Biography's entry on Hartley, calling food in England, arguably her best work, and the one for which she will be remembered. It calls the book, as full of magic and potions as any medieval herbal. Notes References, <references>